So talk to me about um, what inspired you to make this documentary. You're talking about somebody who's been dead for 33 years, who in many ways was a very New York slash East Coast phenomenon, but now suddenly makes more sense. Yes, well, it came out of a previous project. I was making a movie uh, called Studio 54. Roy Cohn was the lawyer for Studio 54, so all through the election year of 2016, I'm watching Roy Cohn footage in that context, and I keep thinking to myself, this is a great subject for a movie. I mean, he's leaping off the screen. He's a great character. And I knew about his uh, relationship to Trump, but then I would think that and put it out of my head because I thought, well, Hillary Clinton's going to win the election and there'll be nothing new to say about Roy Cohn. Uh, and then on... Imagine that. Yes. And <laughs> a night in early November, uh, election night, uh, I was in a hotel room in New York, actually, and then things went sideways. Uh, the first thing I did was go outside and get a huge ice cream sundae. The second thing was I drank all the wine in the room. And the third thing I did was write the treatment for this film uh, because... I really thought it was an urgent story to tell suddenly. What we had, uh, because I'd been thinking about it before, we had uh, someone, Roy Cohn, who would have been a bold footnote to American history who overnight became a modern Machiavelli. So that story I thought needed to be told uh, urgently as soon as possible, and uh, here we are. And then of course, you know, in this... And of course, you, you cover the fact that there are some very deep historical roots to this, this uh, Machiavellian structure that this man put into, into action. Um, what, uh, what, where, let's talk about the very, very origins there. I mean, what, what were the first things you discovered when you started drilling into this, this subject a little more deeply than just the, uh, the initial Studio 54 footage? Well, you know, it goes way back. So uh, you have someone born in uh, the 20s who is a prodigy, uh, and really brilliant person, it turns out, but uh, he's uh, kind of a dark spirit uh, from very early on, incredibly ambitious, and he uses uh, his intelligence in a really dastardly way and becomes a part of a demagogic movement uh, that was transpiring when he was in his early 20s. We call it the McCarthy era, uh, but, you know, it's the catch-all for the uh, persecution of the other, basically. And at that period, it was uh, communists or Bolsheviks or uh, pink ladies, uh, homosexuals as well. Uh, you know, there were these uh, shadowy others that demagogic politicians used to uh, gain power. And Cohen attaches himself to people such as J. Edgar Hoover and, of course, ultimately Joseph McCarthy. It's part of what uh, the historian Richard Hofstetter labeled the paranoid style of American politics. And Roy Cohn, who is, I believe, our modern Machiavelli, posthumously was the great manipulator of that. And he's really teaching McCarthy how to uh, maximize his effectiveness in a new era of communications, which was the television era. So now we're starting to get into oblique uh, things and resonances that should, uh, I believe, remind us of uh, current politics. But I thought it was really interesting to go back and without any um, overt commentary, just lay that all out. So uh, we who live in what Gore Vidal called the United States of Amnesia can <laughs> better remember how we got to now. And this movie is a how we got to now dot connecting uh, attempt. So much of directing a documentary is about editing and other post decisions. Can you talk about some of the choices you made here, both in terms of your animation and the, the editing style? Yeah, I mean, this is an archival film with interviews. Uh, I have another genre of doc I do, which is cinema verite, very different set of muscles because the person's with you. You basically move in with someone and have this strange transference that's a very particular thing. Here you're uh, kind of... Um, building a case in a way, it's more essayistic, and of course it has to be visual, so what's it going to be? Well, I knew what I wanted um, at the outset. I had a kind of film noir, a color film noir in a way, tone, palette in my mind, and uh, even down to musical choices. I, I had an idea, and then I, I started to kind of try things out. Uh, we found extraordinary footage, and we 
went through a great deal of effort to get, for instance, uh, footage from 60 Minutes that was shot in the 60s and 70s that no one's seen before. Um, and uh, that was, it's film, so it's really beautiful when you see it on screen. Another thing that uh, we heard was that Roy Cohn's personal archive had been bought at an auction not long ago by an anonymous buyer, and it turned out to be a true rumor. And I tracked down the person, it's actually someone I knew, who asked to remain anonymous, and he, uh, they, uh, gave us the photos. So what you're seeing when you see shirtless boys frolicking on yachts are Roy Cohn's photos that no one's ever seen before. Uh, and surely he did not want you to see those photos. So uh, that's helped for the elements. Uh, in terms of uh, the way the graphic structure is, is very intricately uh, organized, it, it has a sort of uh, reportorial uh, investigative uh, thrust to it. And everything is built like that. So you have tape recorders whirring, and that was created in our studio. And then the graphics are all through the lens of microfiche, so they're reversed. You're seeing them in the negative as you would microfilm. So there's sort of like a, um, an unpresent inquirer who is guiding the hand of this thing, which is meant to give it a propulsive nature and kind of bring the audience through. Thank you very much, Matt. I appreciate your comments. <laughs>